Hello again. Okay, so we're going to continue with our endocrine, and so now we're going to talk about the parathyroid. And the parathyroid is going to be a set of glands that are on the back side of the thyroid gland. All right. Let's kind of talk about what the parathyroid does. So they're tiny glands. They're actually embedded on the back side of the thyroid. So you have between four and eight of these tiny little glands. And so they're made up of cells called chief cells, and these chief cells are the ones that make parathyroid hormone. So as you're learning the endocrine system, I want to kind of make sure I've, I've, I've told you this, and if I haven't, so you kind of go back. When you're talking about these endocrine organs and the, and the hormones that they make, be sure to pay attention to what type of cell. So if you think back to the thyroid gland, we have those follicular cells uh, that, will, uh, that make the colloid, where you make the thyroid uh, hormone and the parafollicular cells that make the calcitonin. Uh, we're going to talk about alpha cells and beta cells uh, when we talk about the pancreas and insulin and glucagon. So make sure you're paying attention to the types of cells as well as the organ itself. Okay, just want to make sure I point that out if I haven't pointed it out already. Uh, so remember, uh, the chief cells make parathyroid hormone, which we call PTH. And it's important in maintaining blood calcium levels. So it's our important uh, hormone for calcium homeostasis and what it does is when calcium levels are low it will increase or raise blood calcium levels so it responds to low blood calcium in order to raise it back up uh, and calcium is important so hopefully you remember all the ways that you need calcium you need it for bone health you need it for nervous conduction muscle contraction uh, so lots of lots of needs out there for calcium uh, this is a picture to show you what this looks like. So we're looking at the back side, and so here's your thyroid gland, and here are your parathyroid glands. Uh, they were actually kind of found by accident. People were having uh, their thyroids removed, maybe for a tumor, and uh, then having uh, issues with calcium regulation. So it's kind of one of those finds, like, oh, we didn't even know those were there, but something back there must be helping us control calcium because when you remove the thyroid, you had problems maintaining calcium homeostasis. So that's really kind of how they figured that out. Uh, you're going to have a lab video that's going to show you all the histology, but this is just a, a, a slide that includes that, um, that histology, but I'll have a separate video on that for you. Okay. So the parathyroid hormone, it functions uh, when it's released from the parathyroid gland, glands, it's released into the blood, and it will cause the target, which are osteoclasts, to digest bone. Remember, your osteoclast will break down bone, and they will dissolve that matrix, which will release calcium into the blood. Okay, that's one of the things it does. It also uh, works by enhancing calcium reabsorption in the kidney. So uh, we can enhance calcium reabsorption and secretion of phosphate by the kidneys. So the kidneys are a target, all right, not only the bone, but the kidneys. And it also helps promote uh, activation of vitamin D by the kidneys. Uh, if you remember, what does vitamin D do? Vitamin D in the small intestine allows you to absorb calcium from your food, right? So the more vitamin D you have, the better able you are to absorb um, calcium. So it allows um, for more activation of vitamin D, which will increase your calcium absorption in your small intestine. It's controlled by negative feedback so rising calcium levels are going to inhibit that PTH release. So go back to your old teeter-totter when we talk about negative feedback. So your stimulus, you always have to have a stimulus, is falling calcium levels, okay? The thyroid, I mean the parathyroid glands are going to respond to that uh, decrease in calcium and that's going to uh, cause them to release more parathyroid hormone. That parathyroid hormone will travel in the blood to the osteoclast, causing the osteoclast to degrade the bone, releasing the calcium, and that will cause calcium to raise back up and thereby shutting down the original stimulus, so negative feedback. Um, so would you consider this a neural regulation, a hormonal regulation, or a humoral regulation? What's, uh, what's, what's the parathyroid gland, what are they responding to? Is it neural, hormonal, or humoral? It's calcium, so it's humoral. Okay, so don't forget you've got to realize uh, and understand what what the what um, what are you responding to? Is it some kind of uh, hormonal response, humoral response, or um, neural response? 
So let's kind of show you all those different targets for parathyroid hormone. So a stimulus, low blood calcium level, causes release of parathyroid hormone from the parathyroid gland. Targets are the bone and the kidney. And the bone increased osteoclast activity to degrade bone, release calcium into the bloodstream. Kidney increased calcium uh, reabsorption uh, in, the, in the tubule so you don't urinate it out. And then increased activation of vitamin D. We've talked about vitamin D in our skin, and that's kind of the first step. It's, it's a, to, to make vitamin D is a several multi-step process that kind of starts in the skin and finishes in the kidney. And so this is uh, where you can increase that uh, formation of vitamin D in the kidney. Increased vitamin D is gonna cause you to increase the amount of calcium that you absorb. If you're reabsorbing calcium from your, uh, from your urine, that's gonna increase calcium. More calcium from your food absorption is gonna increase the calcium in your blood. And obviously, if you dissolve your bone, that's going to put calcium into your blood. So those are the effects of the parathyroid hormone on the kidney and the bone and the intestines. All right? So the target's not really the, um, the small intestine. If you think about the target, the target is it actually binds the kidney. But the result is you get vitamin D, which causes reabsorption, I mean, uh, reabsorption of calcium in the small intestine. Okay? So I just don't want you to get confused that the small intestines not a target, the parathyroid hormone's not binding to the small intestine, but it's causing uh, an event to occur. All right, does that make sense? I hope so. All right, so we always talk about uh, too much, too little. So hyperparathyroidism and hypoparathyroidism, those are just kind of fun to say. Uh, hyperparathyroidism, uh, usually a tumor. So you could have too much parathyroid hormone. You're gonna be taking too much calcium out of the blood. So your bones can uh, soften and uh, be deformed. Uh, also, too much calcium, which we call hypercalcemia, hypercalcemia, too much calcium in the blood, actually depresses the nervous system, okay, and also can cause the formation of kidney stones, all right, so that may be a, a warning sign as kidney stones of having a PTH imbalance. Uh, hypoparathyroidism, uh, a gland trauma, so perhaps you've removed the thyroid gland and taken the, the parathyroid with it, or neck injury. Uh, and even a dietary magnesium deficiency, uh, that they found a role between how much magnesium you have and the function of the parathyroid uh, gland. Um, if you don't have enough, uh, if you have uh, hypoparathyroidism, then the result will be hypocalcemia. And hypocalcemia tends to lead to tetany, which is gonna be those contracted muscles that won't relax, uh, respiratory paralysis, and even death. Okay, so it is an uh, important hormone because it plays such a role in regulating our calcium. And we know that calcium is important for so many systems, like our nervous system and our muscular system. Uh, and then don't forget, what's the antagonist? What's the hormone that does the opposite of PTH? Calcitonin. Okay, so remember, we don't really know what it does in humans, but if you think about uh, the role of calcium regulation, you have par uh, parathyroid hormone and calcitonin. So make sure you keep those two in mind. Where's calcitonin made? in the thyroid. Same cells that make the uh, thyroid hormone? No. All right. I think you guys have got it now. All right. So that's the end of this uh, lecture. And as usual, I'll see you again.